just as she used to. Well, I have the canes and I have this little gadget there. So I get around. Ida spends most days doing volunteer work. Her apartment is filled with mementos from her long, rich life. Now the same state that recognized her for decades of advocacy work with senior citizens wants to force her from her home. My mind is clear enough. It's just my body that needs the help. And I don't want to be warehoused in a nursing home. But with no family nearby, that's exactly what might happen. A few weeks ago, Ida got this notice in the mail, warning her that the daily home care services she depends on to bathe and dress her and cook her meals would be cut off. The reason? She is $2.18 over the income cap, literally. $2.18. That is, her total income is $1,502.18, and the absolute inflexible cutoff is $1,500. So what does that mean for her? She has no choice but to be institutionalized if she's going to survive. If, if they said you have to go into a nursing home, what would you do? Die. I wouldn't want to go. According to Ida's lawyer, the state through Medicaid pays about $2,900 a month for Ida's home care. Putting her in a nursing home would cost taxpayers even more. It will cost us an extra $650 or so to put her in a nursing home and deprive her of her independence. It doesn't make any sense. I'm very disappointed how the state treats their elderly. Now, late this afternoon, a spokeswoman from the Department of Social Services told us she would be willing to have Ida's case reviewed to explore alternatives, but she said the income limits are set by state law and by the federal government. As for Ida Tonkin, she will find out her fate at a hearing next month. Denise, back to you. Okay, Barbara Pinto reporting live from New Haven. And as Barbara knows, Ida and her lawyer are pushing for a bill in the state legislature that would eliminate the Medicaid earnings cap as long as the patient's home care costs less than care in a nursing home.